I describe here uh, the architecture of a non-aqueous lithium air battery. Uh, and this is the most attractive of the, the lithium air options. The, the, the non-aqueous lithium air battery works in the following way. You have a lithium metal uh, at the anode. And then you have, uh, you have some particles here. Uh, these, are, these are carbon particles. Uh, and then you have oxygen that is fed in. And then uh, in the, in, during discharge, you have lithium that undergoes oxidation, uh, becomes Li+, plus, uh, floats through, and then goes to the, the cathode. The electrons flow through the external circuit. And then you have oxygen coming in, and then electrons from the external circuit, so two of them. So two lithium plus and two electrons combine to form lithium peroxide. This is important that this is lithium peroxide. Um, and then you charge it back. Uh, lithium peroxide uh, essentially decomposes. You form Li plus, and oxygen evolves out. Electrons, uh, electrons go back. And then electrons go back and then combine with lithium to form lithium. So this forms the discharge cycle. This forms the charging cycle. Now what is important to note in, in, uh, in lithium air batteries is lithium peroxide is insoluble in the solution. So in the solution of organic electrolytes that are used, lithium peroxide is insoluble. So what that means is when you discharge the battery, what you're doing is essentially growing thicker and thicker films of lithium peroxide. Right? So what that means is it's different from traditional catalysis where you have, a, you, have a, you have a catalyst particle and you have reactions that happen at the catalyst particle. But in this case, what happens is you don't have traditional catalysis. You have some uh, so you, you, have, you, have, you have some period where it sees the catalyst particle, but beyond that, it's growth of lithium peroxide on top of lithium peroxide. Right? The nicest way to see this is the following experiment. This was done by collaborators at IBM. This is, this is a, what is called a, a capacity curve. What, what, what is plotted here is the potential measured versus lithium, lithium plus as a function of uh, charge or capacity. And so this is in units of milliampere hour. Um, and these are constant current experiments, so this is essentially a time axis. So it's how long I've discharged the battery. And what you see immediately is independent of uh, so this is the discharge, this is the charge, and beyond the small, beyond the first phase, which is the nucleation phase, you have the same features, universal, independent of what catalyst you use. This is XC72, which is a kind of carbon. This is gold on XC72, manganese oxide on XC72. So what this basically says is. The underlying discharge and charging processes are governed by growth and, and etching of lithium peroxide. So the cycle efficiency is really determined by growth and, and etching. And so uh, my entire talk will basically be focused on trying to explain all these features of this curve, this, this capacity curve. Okay, so first thing what we want to do is to understand what is the distance between the discharge and the charge. Right? So what we want to do is to try and understand what is the growth dynamics and the etching dynamics. Right? So what uh, what it is, uh, is essentially a problem of crystal growth, where what we have is we have oxygen coming in, we have Li plus coming in, and then <coughs> electrons. Now these electrons have to flow through lithium peroxide, I'll come back to why this is important. And then these three react at the reactive site to form lithium peroxide. So this is growth of lithium peroxide on top of lithium peroxide. Now, this is my one slide. Uh, Validation of the methodology. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, a plot of the free energy, uh, actually the binding energy per oxygen of a whole host of oxides. Uh, traditional density functional theory based methods are are, are, uh, are notorious for getting oxides um, described poorly. But for these class of oxides, what we show is the calculated uh, heat of formation versus the experimental heat of formation. There is a reasonable predictability. So what, what is shown here is superoxides, these are peroxides, and these are oxides. And and although there's not a one-to-one one-to-one -one correspondence, so that that's the y equals x y for the calculated versus experimental, there's a slope. But what we can at least take away from this is that we can get trends between <coughs> materials reasonably well. And and so uh, you can think of all the analysis I present as as accurate to about 10% uh, uh, quantitative. Now, what we want to do now is to try and understand growth of lithium peroxide. And so we want to try and understand what the mechanism is. So at the anode, we know that Li plus and electrons are in equilibrium with lithium metal. So what that means is I can replace the free energy of lithium plus and free energy of electrons by the free energy of lithium metal. So that gives me a way to calculate the free energy of these two species. 
Then what we want to do is to try and understand the cathode reaction. The cathode reaction is where now I add lithium plus an electron sequentially to oxygen. So I, I, I add a combination of lithium plus an electron to oxygen to form LiO2. And this is on a surface site. The surface site is on an already nucleated film of lithium peroxide. And then you undergo another addition of lithium plus an electron and you form Li2O2. <coughs> and of course, this is a solid because it's insoluble, so you're growing thicker and thicker films. So um, what we have is essentially a complicated high dimensional problem because we want to understand the problem of crystalline growth. And so crystalline growth can happen through many different ways. So one thing that, that uh, one, one possibility is you have nucleation on a terrace site. Uh, one other possibility is you nucleate on a step site. Uh, you can nucleate on a king site or you can diffuse from a terrace site to a step site and then nucleate there or diffuse from a step site, go to a king site and nucleate there. Uh, and similar story during charge where you etch on a, on a terrace site or etch on a step site or etch on a kick site. Now, in electrochemical crystal growth, uh, we're saved by the fact that the, the reactions will run on the sites that, that have the lowest over potential. So the ones that have the, the lowest uh, thermodynamic and kinetic barrier, those are, the, those are the places where the reactions will run the fastest. And so I'll show you a representative, uh, representative uh, Set of uh, set of calculations on a king site, on a step site, on a terrace site, and and we've of course explored a whole host of these things, and they all the trends are more or less similar. Now um, let's first look at what happens on a king site, and before I do that, uh, I'll introduce a concept that I will go I will use over and over again. So I'll, I'll go over this part slowly. Uh, what I show here is voltmeter. The voltmeter reads zero, so this is zero on the lithium lithium plus scale. So zero versus lithium, lithium plus, it is downhill in free energy to take four Li plus and four electrons to oxygen and put them in lithium peroxide. So the lithium would rather reside in lithium peroxide than as Li plus. Now, what you do as you increase the potential is essentially change the free energy of the electron. Right? So you, you change the free energy of the electron by E times U, minus EU rather. So uh, you bring down the free energy of these different species. So uh, the, the reactant, the, the intermediate species are exactly the ones that I wrote down in the previous mechanism, LiO2 and, and Li2O2 and other species. And so what you do is <coughs> when you increase the potential, you increase the free energy, uh, you, you, you lower the free energy of these electrons, and you hit a potential. This is 2.54 on the lithium-lithium plus axis. This is the highest potential at which this reaction scheme is still downhill in free energy, right? So why is this important? Well, this can be thought of as a thermodynamic limit for when this reaction would be expected to proceed at high rate, right? There could be other kinetic barriers on top of it, but this is a minimum, this is a, this is a necessary requirement, it's not a sufficient requirement, but this is a necessary requirement to understand when this reaction scheme will run at high rate. And so this actually runs at 2.54 volts, uh, uh, on a kink side. Uh, the equilibrium potential is about 2.66, so it runs at a, a very small over potential of 0.12. Uh, so it basically discharges at a kink side at an over potential of 0.12. It, we can do the charging process, which is etching, and this runs at about 0.19, right? Which is quite surprising because I started out telling you all this bad things about oxygen electrochemistry with protons, where you needed to pay a 0.4 volt penalty no matter what either way, right? Here somehow you're able to beat this limit. And, 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 and why is this the case? This is the case because you're actually forming lithium peroxide and not lithium oxide. Why is this important? Because lithium peroxide keeps the oxygen-oxygen bond intact. So what that means is the, the reaction scheme basically does not break any oxygen-oxygen bond and that's really the major cause <coughs> for all the problems with oxygen electrochemistry with protons. We'll come back to that later. So you can discharge and charge at the king thought very low over potentials. What about the story on a step side? On a step side, the story is exactly similar. You can discharge on a step side at about 0.1 volts. You can form a kink, which is essentially uh, uh, you can charge on a on a on a step basically at 0.15 volts. Now on a terrace, the story gets a little bit more complicated. To form an island on a terrace, uh, it costs slightly higher over potential. This is not surprising because the terrace. You want to break the extended symmetry of the uh, terrace side, so you pay a higher penalty. This is 0.68 volts. Uh, the pit formation is 0.2. But what I said earlier, 
comes into play because the sites that are the lowest over potentials are the ones that will dominate in play. Right? What does the experiment say? Well, uh, one could look at uh, linear speed photomograms. This is uh, a plot of the current as a function of potential. And so this is done under two, uh, two different uh, gas purging environments. One is under argon, the other one is under oxygen. Argon is essentially the background current. Now what I what is shown here is, is is current as a function of potential measured versus lithium lithium plus. The equilibrium potential sits somewhere here, and so we have we have a reduction feature and oxidation feature uh, that happens at very low over potentials. Uh, but what is essential to realize, and this is extremely important, is unless you you this is this is only a measure of current, so which is essentially only a measure of electrons, right? Unless you calibrate the electrons to the reaction that is going on and in some way quantify electrons to the amount of oxygen consumed or electrons to the amount of oxygen evolved, you cannot say anything conclusive about the reaction that is going on. So this is uh, this is done in, in, a, in a DEM cell uh, in, with a, where uh, this is done at IBM, our collaborators who carried out these experiments, where this where what they do is they, 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 they design a, a, a battery and then hook it up to a mass spectrometer and then they can calibrate what are the gas products consumed and what are the gas products uh, uh, evolved. And so what you can extract out of this is a very, very important parameter, which is electrons per oxygen. Right? This is really what you want to know. How many electrons are going towards the reaction I want? Right? This is exactly the question we want to know in batteries because we want to minimize the, minimize the parasitic reactions as much as possible. And what you see is under discharge, so this is the reduction, under discharge the reaction is nearly perfect, it's two electrons per oxygen. Under charge it's almost perfect at two electrons per oxygen, but then it starts to deviate away. It's also some CO2 and we come back to why this is important. But basically this, this at least reasonably proves that the reaction that is going on under discharge and charge is basically the reduction of oxygen, uh, reduction of oxygen here and then um, evolution of oxygen. So one can carry out a more concrete analysis um, to see if we can make a high rate battery out of this. This is this is important if we want to hit high power density. And so uh, these are these are experiments measure. Uh, these are experiments done on uh, on uh, on uh, model model surfaces which have low surface area. So in this case, if you have a 20 microampere current that corresponds to a 20 milliampere per centimeter square on a real high surface area battery, uh, and what you see here is uh, the but over potential, we'll come back to these features later, just focus on the starting part. The over potential that you have to pay, the over potential penalty that you have to pay is very, very small. And these experiments are essentially done on glassy carbon, so there is no change, no catalyst particles, nothing is needed, dirt cheap. And what you see here is immediately that there is low over potentials during discharge and low over potentials during charge. So this is, this is very, very much in line with the kind of predictions that we made. And we can carry out a more, more concrete analysis that is the voltage dependence of the current, and this is done in a, in a Tafel plot where we show log of the current as a function of potential, and this is theory, this is experiments. The most important question that one needs to answer is what is the distance between these two? The distance between these two is the voltage penalty that I have to pay, and what we predict is about 0.3 volts, and what we see in experiments is about 0.4 volts. So it's, very, it's an excellent semi-quantitative agreement uh, with experiments. Uh, we in fact even capture some of these uh, these finer uh, finer features. There's this non-linearity that comes out because uh, to discharge on a terrace it costs a high over potential so that brings this non-linearity in this curve. Uh, and we also we also show that it's uh, the charge curve is more more linear and that actually that those features also actually come out really nicely. So what this what this shows is the cycle efficiency of this battery is actually really good. Right? So 